God, you son of a... Okay, so, hi, <laughs> my name is Adam, and welcome to my micro bakery. Currently, it operates from my relatively small two-bedroom home, which is situated on about half an acre here in central Victoria. Jammed. Don't break on me. This might look like a little bit of a mess, and it's honestly probably because it is. I love being out here, I do love my garden, but um. There's a lot of projects on the go, and there's always something else that needs doing. For example, I should be inside prepping right now <laughs> instead of watering plants, but it is what it is. Um, but it's delightful chaos, I suppose. It's nice. As you can hear, the mix is well and truly on the way. It's my second lot of dough. Just about ready to come out. And because I only have one little mixer, I have to weigh up as I go, due to just physical limitations. The big bakeries I've worked at often have this all done in advance, well, not the water, but uh, all their flowers are pre-weighed and so they can just dump and, and mix as they go and have multiple mixers going and much more organized than I can be. I do what I can. This is my mix for both my plain loaf essentially as well as baguettes. This is quite a dark mix as well even though I call it my plain loaf. It's mainly comprised of an unbleached white baker's flour made from the fine folks at Whole Grain Milling, an Australian wheat and flour company. Um, they are awesome. Big fan of their work.
So all the doughs have now been mixed. Um, now we're moving on to sort of the next phase of the day. Uh, I've got the mixer just about clean, which I won't need again today, so I can give that a good clean up. Uh, I'll give the bench a good wipe down, though I will need it quite a bit more today. Um, I'll be just developing the doughs now that they're all mixed. Uh, that'll happen over the next couple of hours, and I've got the doughs I mixed this morning as well that I need to attend to. I've got a little test batch of English muffins here, and my fruit loaves are still bulk fermenting. Um, so yeah, still a bit to go today. Uh, once the doughs are developed and sufficiently fermented, of course we'll be back on the bench to shape those and get them ready for bake off tomorrow. So uh, I'll be baking off the muffins and fruit loaves this morning. Oh, this morning, what's the time now? Probably early this afternoon at this point. Um, yeah, testing uh, new cadences out, new recipes. Um, you all try and all part of trying to make this a um, viable full-time venture. So I realize a little history may be pertinent, especially in this first video, because the first loaves of bread I sold with this bakery was actually November of 21, if I remember rightly. Which is to say, you know, coming on 18 months of being in business, technically. That being said, it was not only a part-time venture, but also just not my primary source of income. I had employment, which was my main focus, and was all fine and good. Um, 
I always had the idea on the back of my mind to um, give this bakery a go full time, but not necessarily now. But the way things panned out in the new year with my employment specifically, I actually was changing jobs and then that job didn't work out. and It was all a bit of a mess, but um, now seemed like the opportunity to sort of give it a go and see where things land. So, because it seemed like a pertinent point to sort of jump in now that I'm doing this full time and need to build a business and build awareness and all that stuff, sell bread and find people to sell it to. So this is my third test batch of English muffins. Uh, seems like a potentially good addition to the menu. So the dough is very easy to work, which is cool, and being small and modular. Um, yeah, you can crank out a lot of units relatively quickly. So seems like a good expansion option when it comes to the menu. So they've come out all right so far. Um, some of the recipes I was referencing when I developed my own called for instant yeast in addition to uh, sourdough culture. I am doing my darndest to make sure everything out of my kitchen is with wild yeast only. I don't know if that's just me being kind of pretentious, but <laughs> I'm trying my best. But um, to that end, I have been struggling a little bit with making sure that they're sufficiently proofed. I want them to be nice and fluffy on the inside, and they've been coming out a little bit too dense. So I'm working on that, and I've tried a slightly different method this time around. I'm pretty happy with the recipe. I think it was the method where I was definitely struggling. I should probably also mention, this is my second bake as a full-time baker. <laughs> In, oh, out of my kitchen, at least. So really you're coming in at a very formative time. A new chapter, not the first chapter, but still a very formative time for this bakery. Um, so I still, I say full time in the air quotes because I definitely don't have enough clientele or stockists to, can, like, to make anywhere near a full time income. Still very much in the building the business sort of phase. And I'm trying to do that in a kind of I guess sustainable way, both for myself, physically and emotionally, uh, but also financially as well, yeah? I definitely don't think of myself as any kind of entrepreneur, I tell you that much. Never considered I might be a small business owner, and even like being relatively new to the, the practice of baking, you know? Professionally, I've only been doing this well, part-time for the last couple of years, but and a little bit of full-time experience in some bigger bakeries, which really helped. All that to say, I'm still learning a lot in many capacities, and so getting a business loan and renting a premises and going into piles of debt, but I'm trying to manage this in such a way that it doesn't become overwhelming. You know, I'm not gonna take out a loan on a, a bunch of equipment and da-da-da, just to sort of see it fail. I'd rather build this up slowly in a way that, I can't say ensure success, but gives me a greater chance of success. And on my own terms, I think, is the most important thing. One of the things I quickly came to realize being in other people's kitchens is that I, I can do it, but they're high tempo, high volume, and it's intense. It's intense. It's an intense space. And it's just, I found it's just not how I like to work. And maybe that's a cop-out, I'm not sure, but... I'm a bit of a slow-moving guy, I suppose. like to take things slowly, learn as I go. Stop when I need to. Whoops. Here come the muffins. Side one. Ooh. I think they may have cooked a little quickly. Pretty puffy. <laughs> That one there's actually burst, unfortunately. Possibly an egregious 
like shaping on my part. Whenever something comes out a bit wonky, I just call it artisan, yeah? Product consistency in kitchens like this are incredibly difficult. Even at the, high, even at the larger scale, I found. It's hecking difficult. It's still a high quality product, it's just not something you'd find on a supermarket shelf. In terms of consistency, I suppose, in this context. Just depending on the day and the process and how I'm feeling. Things are always a little bit different. Which I think is part of the charm and part of the interest, right? Brought you in close for the reveal. <laughs> Not too bad, eh? Possibly a touch, yeah, touch, a touch brown for sure. I think I left the oven a little too hot, but... They definitely lifted. Hopefully they've got a nice... I'm looking for a nice craggly inside. This is getting hot. I'm going to put it down. But we'll um, let them cool off for a little bit, and we'll um, have a look at the crumb. In the meanwhile, I'd love to switch this guy off, but we in fact need to crank it and cook those fruit lobes over there. Oh, all right, so we're almost there for today. I've got my fruit loaves in the oven. I need to set a timer for those. They're due to come out soon. And then I've just got some cleanup to do and we're done for today. Tomorrow, all the main breads get baked from the fridge. I am baguettes, two baguettes happen in the morning, but let's have a look at one of these, shall we? before I let you go. These may be terrible, I haven't looked at one first, so uh... <laughs> yeah. What do you reckon? Still a little dense for mine, maybe I could have let them proof a little longer. They're getting better. Looking at through the freaking viewfinder is better than real life, I swear. Hmm. It tastes good. I mean, you can see in the cross section there from my bite. But I haven't eaten much today, so that's my snack. Sorry, dead battery. <laughs> but no, I didn't switch the camera on this morning because I was up very, very early. And if I'm honest, the bakes have been a touch stressful. You know, it's the pivotal moment. It's where you see whether you screwed things up or things went well, so. Um, I had to be focused given, yeah, yeah, new oven and some new processes. It's all, I'm feeling like I'm back at square one. Um, like when I first opened this bakery up back in the day, so um, making mistakes. Like I got my temperatures wrong on the small oven this morning, which shouldn't be my problem because I'm very used to that oven. But I, yeah, nearly burnt some bread. And the big boy I'm just not very used to. Uh, it just handles temperatures so, so much differently. But um, look, I think the bread still come out fairly well. Okay, I can actually bring you around, I'll show you. All right. So here's a couple. There's the plain, I just call it the good sourdough, and there's the pane de casa. Lift it a little bit wonky. I feel like maybe that's a better, that's a better example. I intend, like, this is meant to be a nice crusty, rustic kind of loaf. I mean, most of my bread kind of is. Here's the spelt loaves. Spelt in sunflower. Covered in linseed and it's making a mess. <laughs> Those are the ones I nearly burnt this morning. And honey oat. 
which is dark, but the sugar's caramelized, so that's actually pretty spot on. That oh, smells really good. Did I show you the fruit loads? I was actually stoked with these. Look at these little buggers. With a new process and changes to the recipe. Oh, it smells like, it's kind of like, it's a, not a traditional fruit loaf. It's like a choc orange, choc citrus kind of vibe. I was saying to my partner this morning, you know, talking about the Dunning-Kruger effect, if people are familiar. Long story short, I feel like I'm learning and progressing a lot, but my relative confidence in my knowledge is quite low at the moment. I'm, you know, I'm out of my depth. I'm doing something new, relatively. And so I'm questioning and being really self-critical and feeling the imposter syndrome and all that stuff. Um, because it's, and maybe I'm blowing it out of proportion, but I feel like it's a very critical time, critical juncture for me in this bakery. And it's like, I'm trying to build hype. I'm trying to get the word out. And if I then deliver a substandard product, people are going to be like, well, I tried. I didn't like his stuff. I'm not, I'm trying to, this kind of business is going to be built on return customers. And if I burn those bridges, so I hope there's, um, an element of patience amongst my purchases, my customers for today. But look, and the thing is, I don't think it's bad bread. I had a, I had a couple spares and I checked them. I even checked one of the burnt, the burnt spell loaves and the crumb is beautiful. I'll show you actually. It's got a killer smell, but hang on. That's not, that's not how social media wants it. You got to do it like this. That's beautiful. I, like I would call it basically perfect crumb. Because <laughs> yeah, it's very dense. This is 50% of the whole flour. 50% of this flour is whole spelt and another 25% is white spelt. And then there's a little bit of my unbleached high protein white flour. So, you know, all in all, I think things have gone pretty well. Uh, I've just started packing things up for deliveries this morning. Got quite a lot of orders actually. I'm pretty stoked. So maybe Saturdays are gonna be a good day for me moving forward. And I've still got baguettes to go. I can show you those when they come out.